in a period of hundreds of millions of years, with enormous pressure and heat, the Earth formed petroleum from decayed living matter. And in less than 150 years, by many estimates, we have bled the planet of roughly half of its oil. We have extracted roughly one trillion barrels of oil since the late 19th century. Most of that oil has been consumed by Western societies, and it has been, arguably, the basis for the enormous power and wealth of Western nations. Now, most of the remaining oil on Earth lies underground in less industrially developed countries. In order to get that oil, and to get it as cheaply as possible, Western companies have devastated environments and caused terrible human suffering. People in Western societies are largely unaware of the harm caused from oil extraction. We are unaware because it goes unreported. Now we are confronted by the prospect of world peak oil. Peak oil is the point in time where the quantity of petroleum extracted from the earth begins to irreversibly decline. As fossil fuels are so deeply intertwined in our existence, particularly our food production, the results could be catastrophic, especially in the face of rapidly rising oil demand. And as oil becomes scarce and prices rise, the environmental destruction and human suffering will likely increase. And the competition for oil will get more aggressive. It sounds often like the scale of the problems is so huge. And I think what I love is that the level at which you can intervene really is one village, one community, one home, one family at a time. It makes a difference. Our society is almost unrecognizable in almost every dimension from what it was like 100 years ago. If we can make those changes over the last hundred years, why can't we make similar changes in the next hundred, but in a very different direction, in the direction of a more sustainable world? We have got to convince people that given current trends, we're headed for disaster. That's the bad news. This new knowledge gives us the possibility of acting in ways that create a brilliant future for all of us. So we need, as, as environmentalists, as good economists, as, as just concerned citizens, to begin to discern that a brighter future comes from making change. What one person can do, what you can do, what each one of us must do if we're going to have a decent world, a good world in which to live, and certainly if we're going to leave a healthy planet to our children and grandchildren. What we must do is personally wake up to these issues and then be an instrument of awakening, if only for one other person. Tag, you're it.
50 Americans are still held captive, innocent victims of terrorism. And These deeds make so evident the bestial nature of those who would assume power. Not through strengthening these nuclear, or biological, or chemical weapons. And it failed. It failed. The explosion appears to be the work of terrorists. The cowards who committed this murderous act must not go unpunished. The attack took place on American soil. But it was an attack on the heart and soul of the civilized world. On September 11th, the war against Islamic fanaticism came home. In disgust and anger, some condemned the religion itself. A lot of people say, you know, what's your God, Allah, or this and that. I think, you know, the, whether you call him Allah or whether you call him God or, you know, whatever other name you may use uh, for the one uh, being, it's, it's all the same. I think we all pray to one God. As America recovers from 9-11, Islam in America finds itself challenged. A source of peace for many, now a faith under fire. Hello, I'm Forrest Sawyer. Its name... In Medina, the American Muslims will be briefed about their four-day pilgrimage from Medina to the holy city of Mecca. So, all of this time that you're spending in Medina, I don't want you to get overcharged and, 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 and emotional and you're not getting any sleep. I don't think there's any other trip that has more stress and tension than Hajj. So, uh, be ready. We're at the place called Miqat, which is where we prepare with our dress and, and pray two uh, rakats, and at the same time, get prepared for the hazard. It is a stunning sight. Millions of pilgrims packed into cars, buses, tents, and hot, dusty streets. People of virtually every color, culture, and country including the United States. Well, most people don't expect that you are an American at first. My name is James Rayner, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, 28 years old. My name is Bridget Anthony. Okay. Where are you from? Maryland. Um, I'm originally from Iowa, from Madison County, Iowa. When I met all these American Muslims, I just felt this sense of closeness with them uh, even more, in a, in a way, I mean, I guess because you know, we met in, in a foreign land and we come from the same place, and we just felt this sense of unity but, and, and love for each other. Pino Gordo is an indigenous community bordering the deep Sinaforosa Canyon. Located high up on a mesa, Pino Gordo is surrounded by thick forests of pine and oak. In fact, this community has one of the last remaining stands of old growth pine left in northern Mexico and was a prime target of the forestry project. What it didn't have was roads. The World Bank project would change that. This is one of the few areas that hasn't been logged. In 1992, the year Luis Torres was killed, on the site of a former landfill in the capital city of Chihuahua, a new neighborhood was started. The Tarahumara that had been pushed out of the Sierra were building a new barrio. While Consejo Asesor has been working to get justice for the communities of the Sierra, the Tarahumara in the city 
have built a community of their own. Where once there was a windswept, littered piece of land at the edge of town, there was now a church, stores, and homes. Here in the city, we say, no, I'm not a Tarumán. Why do I deny it? I have to deny it. Because what is one is until that one exists. I don't have to deny it. Tarumán would be to deny it one of their own blood. As they have in the Sierra, the Tarahumara in the city persevere. And even here, the Tarahumara still run.